Okay, we love. Okay, so thank you to everyone for attending this meeting of the Orvian Scrutiny Task Group and its properties on Thursday, the 22nd of June, 2023. My name is Councillor Sir Rainsworth and I am chair of this committee. Councillor Maranell is vice chair. When you want to speak, please raise your hand to indicate to me that you wish to speak. When I invite you to speak, please turn your microphone on. Please turn your microphone off when you have finished speaking. If you are joining the meeting via Teams, please use the raise hand function on your iPad to indicate you wish to speak. If the technology fails, I will adjourn the meeting for a few minutes to try and resolve the issue, or if this is not possible, a new date and time will be organised. Please can everyone ensure their phones are turned to silence. We are not expecting a fire drill, so if the alarm sound, please exit the way you came in. Can I ask quickly why, why the report isn't attached to the agenda on Teams? Uh, I'll be able to attach it after this meeting. I, think I can't is find it. it. We have got paper copies of the reports yeah, around you, yeah. the um, chamber. But I would have thought it, you know, it would have been attached to this agenda. Yeah, you can do. Yeah. But but no, I'm, but it usually is. So, sorry, but it usually is attached to the to the report, and I think it should have been. I'll show up now. <laughs> for now, for the moment. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, I have read it, but I can't remember where. Um, so, item, agenda item number one, have we got any apologies for absence? We have apologies from Councillor Arjun Singh and Councillor Aaron Bieber. Thank you. Um, declarations of any interest. Members are reminded of their responsibility to declare any pecuniary interest in respect to matters containing this, this agenda. If you have any pecuniary interest, you must withdraw from this meeting. Anybody got any uh, interests? Okay, so item number two, minutes of the meeting from Tuesday the 14th of March 2023. Um, are these a correct record? Can I just have a uh, poser and a seconder, please? Is that... Is everybody happy with the minutes? Move those, Chair. Yeah. Can they be noted? Okay, um, so agenda item number three, uh, discussion with exec member for homes and housing and exec member for planning and development. So uh, we've got, with joining us today, we've got Councillor Morwood and Councillor Howarth. Um, does anybody have any questions for uh, Councillor Morwood and Councillor Howarth? Would you like to ask anything? Well, can I ask you both? It's the same question, really. You, Chair. Do you think at the moment the, the empty homes property is in the right under the right directive directorate being under planning, or would it be more suited to the housing directorate? I'll leave you to fight it out amongst yourselves. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you to speak. Are you? Mm -hmm. I'll, 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 I'll tell you to sneak out. I'll tell you to Yeah, I was invited out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see you actually. I can't confess to a great deal of knowledge about this area, uh, but I did actually look into it a few weeks ago, knowing this was coming up, and I spoke to Adele, and she confirmed what I'd earlier found is that we don't have an officer that's designated particularly for this area. So I think the question's a good one, not only in relation to which directorate it's in. But who, if anybody is uh, given responsibility for it? Um, the that could have been my next question. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm sure you knew all that. But um, effectively, uh, from my point of view, looking at the wider issue of homes and housing, we've got quite a substantial shortfall. Um, I think whichever measure you look at, that. Uh, is coming the case. Um, the degree of homelessness, if one listens to the uh, lunchtime news on the budget and the pressure that's going to be put on homeowners, does suggest, and I've spoke to uh, officers directly involved with homelessness, is there has been an increase in families having to leave rented properties and um, their own mortgage properties because of financial pressures. Now, if anything, given 5% increase, which is 50 times more than a couple of years ago, that's bound to put pressure on the situation. 
My only question about this is whether there are enough properties to tackle and whether the time lag in tackling a lot of these properties that have been around for a long time. Now, that's something I can't answer. It's probably worth looking into, but I think there's going to be a time lag if we do actually try to get the, uh, some properties on the market and whether or not there are enough of them to justify it. Can I come in before? A couple of, couple of things, really. When we did have a dedicated officer, which we did a few years ago, Tim might remember. Tim might remember more <laughs> than I do. When we had a dedicated officer, these issues were, some, a lot of them were addressed. Some weren't, but they were addressed, and we did feel like we were moving somewhere with the empty properties which one of the reasons I think why we've got this task group is we don't think we are doing those. So that was one thing. And the other thing is, I know at South Ribble, they come under the, the housing side of things, not planning, mm. which to me, that's where it sits, logically, rather than with planning and enforcement. You know, so just my thought. Anyway, just my thought. OK, I'm just going to bring Alistair on. Mm, I'll carry on from there, then. Yeah, I, agree, I, I agree with you. Uh, to me, it, it seems to sit more in terms of housing because it's talking about properties. Um, and the only time that it should really then come in towards the planning and enforcement area is for that very reason. If uh, somebody, at some point, the empty house is starting to cause a problem in the area for whatever reason, uh, and it gets to a stage where uh, something has to be done in terms of... Uh, enforcement or any legal action, then it's, that's when it usually comes over in, in, into this, uh, my section. But enforcement in general is kind of spread. There are different types of enforcement and so on, and, and they are, are spread. So maybe another for future time is, should there be a, a, an overall enforcement? As, as to uh, having a, a particular officer in, in charge of that, it depends on what you're, you're, um, what you're trying to do. I mean, I, I've, I've only had a only start looking at your draft here. Um, at the moment, I, we could turn around and say the policy is as long as you keep it, it's 150, then, I think, whatever the yeah, target the is. Target, yeah. yeah. Um, so we were below that. Um, so everything's hunky dory. So it's, it's too bland a target. It's just a simple number. Perhaps something along the lines of uh, we expect only so many properties that have been empty two to four years. and we don't expect, you know, we expect a very small percentage of those who have been empty for 20 years and so on, but just a blanket kind of 150, we've reached, we've managed to get under that target. So as far as the policy is concerned, we're, we're okay, but it's obviously not working uh, uh, like that. Um, so if you do look to appoint some, an officer who's specifically uh, for that purpose, then uh, as I said, I'm ready. You may have already done that, but have you got a, a specific a sort of idea of the criteria that you would want that person to do? do you, I mean, are you you want them to be chasing uh, the the ownership and chasing the legal side of things and chasing whatever whatever's required, really? Um, I'll leave it to that for a minute. Then, can I, yeah, can I come back? What well, we obviously have a job spec somewhere for that because we did have a de dedicated officer. Who did this not many years ago? Councillor Snape pulled back, yeah. Yeah, so those parameters are already there. Or they should be. Sorry. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, there is a job spec for a joint licensing and empty properties officer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are, I can't recall what, exactly what's on, on the job spec, but um, certainly that, that was a split post. Um, so, whether or not that, that would fulfill a, you know, a full-time equivalent post, I suppose, is a decision for the council to make. Kim? Yeah, I think prior to the joint uh, licensing stroke, empty, the, the duplicate role, there was an indi there there was yeah. at least there was one, maybe two or three people that fulfilled an individual role specific to bottoming long-term empty properties. I think the target was still the same of 150. But I remember it was under the previous cabinet member, I think it was Paul Wormsley, and that individual officer worked quite closely with that cabinet member 
to look at the long-term empty properties that were causing the most complaints at the time even I don't I mean I know yeah, I think it's about 100 now isn't it or something at the time Chorley wasn't seen as having like and, and still not now it's not seen as having a major problem with long-term empty properties I think it was more of a prob with a prop I'm trying to think how to how to phrase it Long-term <laughs> what we play around is that we don't have a long-term empty property problem, we have a problem with long-term empty properties. Yeah, problem with a small number of long-term empty And the thing is, the, the, the trend over the last few years since um, like Carl went into that dual role, because he, 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 he had less time to spend on empty properties, was that because it was, I think the, tre the perception to members was that the easy wins were being picked off to appease the target, but then the properties that cause the most amount of grief for communities, grief for members, um, you know, eyesore on the villages, town centres, whatever, um, that they weren't getting in touch because they were the ones that needed a bit more work. Now, from what I recall, like the council's ne certainly not, I don't think I've been a councillor for, what, 10 years. I don't think we've ever used like any CPOs or anything like that. But a lot of the work that Carl used to do in the chat before that was basically like bottoming who was the property owner, finding out why they weren't doing stuff with the house. I think there was minimal grants and things like that. And basically just chivying away at it over the course of time, just re trying to sort of say, do you realise this is what you're leaving people to put up with? And over the course of time, I mean, I used to go to those team meetings and he made a mass... I know there is this perception that there wasn't a difference made, but there was a massive difference made because somebody was just gently prodding people along to do the right thing. You know, like, the, I remember there was examples where there were a few people that were in the army and they had a house that they never came back to. So, you know, and he chased him and chased him and chased him and he said, look, come back and I'll show you what you leave, you know, and suddenly they're like, I didn't realise it was in such a state. There are others that, um, you know, like where people have gone in care homes and things like that, which are a lot more difficult to deal with, aren't they? But I think without spending a lot of money, just dedicating officer time, as in, you know, to send letters and to be a pain in the bum to be... <laughs> um, I think a lot of difference can be made, even on a part-time basis, to be honest. Because it's like you said, there isn't that there aren't that many of them, but I think the ones that are um, the more historical ones, they're not moving anywhere because the target is being there. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, that's why I said this 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 target has kind of ruled everything, and certainly when Carl, um, I think I was only in it about a year when I became an exec officer, and then he moved on. Um, I, I agree that there probably was uh, a difference in terms of those more difficult properties because somebody was uh, looking into it. Whereas, when you, as you know now, when you, when you start asking for information, it's it's Nathan, but Nathan then has to get onto um, uh, um, is it uh, council tax? Council tax. They they actually keep track of um, of the actual properties and so on. So it. it it's a very roundabout way of, of trying to find out. And then they, at the end of the day, they say, right, well, there's so many of this, so many of that, so many of the other. But we're meeting the target, so no problem. And it comes, and, and it, when it only comes to um, planning and enforcement and so forth when problems start. But if somebody was pushing and trying to find out what was going on beforehand, then maybe it wouldn't get to that stage. But at the moment, yeah, that's, that, that's the way it is. And... There was a report way back when no one else were asking, and, and I had one or two very similar suggestions, but he got pulled because um, it cost money, and uh, certain things I was suggesting needed much more legal clearance and so on. So some of these things are, are um, I mean, compulsory purchase. I mean, uh, I know legal nearly had a fit when I suggested that, because um, <laughs> uh, it's not as, well, it's not as straightforward as it might be. But certainly it needs looking at, and I hope that whatever suggestions have been, as they've had a quick look, I mean, they look, uh, apart from the last one, as I say, um, the um, compulsory purchase, that, well, we'll wait and see what you'll say about that. Yeah, thanks, Sat. 
I mean, from what we said, one thing we need to do is like kind of streamline the whole process and actually get get a flowchart or something like that in place of what goes up because nobody seems to know. Yeah. And it wanders here and it wanders there. And it, and, and, and it actually needs to be bottomed out, if you will, you know. Yeah. This, 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 and it, yes, no. One of those kind of flowchart things and what, how, how to go through the process because... Uh, one of, the, one of the good things, actually, I mean, I know we've got a long-term empty property in Adlington, but actually through the process, we've actually found out who owns it, even though they are doing, not doing anything with it. But it was a big breakthrough to find out who actually owned the property, because nobody knew. So that was a success in a way, even though it's still a blight. You know, so... Can I just... Sorry, I'll bring yeah, Terry yeah. and then I'll bring <laughs> Given that you're moving towards, or hopefully moving towards, an end result on this, do you see the end result necessarily being in terms of providing additional housing, or do you see it in terms of improving the environment? There does seem to be a conflict here. Yeah, I, was, I, I would say both of those things. Yeah. You know, I mean, yes, hopefully to provide, and our council tax base, it would help. Because it's, if those properties, there's people living in them, then we're getting some, we're getting more council tax from them, which we're not at the moment. And then there's the other one, I mean, the derelict one in Adlington, we're forever having to go and board it up because they keep breaking in, so there's a cost there. So, you, you know. Can I, can I just come back in? Sorry, I, I do agree with what June's saying. In some ways, I can see a benefit to maybe the council acquiring some of these empty mm -hmm. properties to, to put them back into use. And especially, like, I mean, I know in my world, we have, there's been one or two bungalows that have been long term empty. And there's a housing need for the bungalow then, surely. So I think it would be a benefit if, if we did do that eventually at some point in the future. Yeah, I was just going to, just on Terry's previous point about environment and creating um, additional houses for people to live in and that. I think Preston Council, I mentioned it last time, apparently Preston Council have started a scheme working quite closely with um, the Community Gateway Association and putting money in between them. I and I can't remember, I got the information at last time, didn't I, about how many um, long-term empty properties that's now resurrected into formal properties for people to live in and from the reports and stuff that got last time I think that um, that was perceived to be quite innovative in terms of a housing association I know we I think we have a bit of a thing in Trolley where we always go to the same housing associations and there might be just because the big ones that we usually deal with say no there might be others out there that want to do something a bit different um, and the other one I was going to say was um, when we had the discussion in the other room, didn't we? I think environmental health, I don't, environmental health sits under, Alice, does it sit under it? I don't know. Oh, right. No, because uh, environmental health, Laura, is it Laura Jean Taylor? Yeah. She was saying, particularly from a South Ribble end of her service, that um, a lot of these types of issues, you know, the ones that are causing problems for neighbours and residents and sort of 10, 15, 20 years plus, that they tend to come to her under her, you know, with all this new antisocial behaviour legislation and all those different... And whether or not... I don't know whether or not you think that environmental health should be factored into... into what we're suggesting as well, because obviously... I mean, we've kind of done the argument to death that it doesn't... It doesn't always come down to planning enforcement, but I think environmental health also have a, a part to play in it as well, don't they? I mean, at the end of the day, that's usually... When it gets to that stage, because it's uh, when it starts to fall apart, then they get rats and all the rest of it, and then they, the rats move into next door and so on. And that's when it suddenly uh, comes to uh, enforcement and so forth. But again, it's, then it's a point of almost starting afresh from, right, who owns it? No idea. So then that takes time. Meanwhile, the rats are still running around, the grass is getting six foot high and, and all the rest of it. So there's no... It's, it, there doesn't seem to be any quick quick fix, um, and 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 again, it's just a, a general sort of 
point. I'm just thinking, thinking as I say, off the top of my head, really, these things. I mean, when you talk about, we've got a definition of long-term empty properties, and it's you know, after two years. In your head, have you got, right, the ones that are two to three, four years are usually okay, because in most cases, the ones that get cleared after two, three, and four years, which, which keeps your target down, and that's the, the easier ones. But that's because people have, they've been renovated, or they've just been sold off, and they've been rebuilt, and, and the various things. But there's, there's usually a quick turnover of the sort of two to five year ones. It's the, it's, it's one they get a bit, a bit longer than, than then. So again, maybe the target, this, this, which I, I hate, I hate these, these particular targets. Maybe it should be, you know, there should be a specific target for maybe the two to five years, because we know that's going to be a quick turnover, but there should be something else for those longer term properties that at the end of the day, if nothing gets done, it's going to start causing people problems. And without a doubt, I think it needs uh, officer time and, and money, so therefore, uh, to go after those that are five years and above, and certainly the 10 years and above. But you'll have no doubt had reports that those very, very long-term properties, there's, it's, it's horrendous trying to find out what, who, who they belong to. Those that have been around for 20 years and so on, they, you'll, you'll know them. Um, it's just a nightmare trying to work out who owns them. In fact, the, the various, you know, one particular property, it's, you know, one person inherits it, dies and moves on to the next one. They, they die before anything gets sorted. And so there's like about three or four probates all trying to sort out who, who owns this particular house and so on. So it, it can be a nightmare. But if you've got nobody actually looking at it and spending time doing it, it will always remain a nightmare. Thanks, Chair. Um, am I right in thinking, um, Alistair, that you you don't like the idea of a CPO? Just for my own clarity, because I think no, if we've I, got, I so like the idea. all right, okay. do with it and uh, uh, and possibly to help with that, the housing situation if the council could then make them an offer as it were. But the trouble is everybody will want the uh, the market rate and we can't afford the market rate really but if they've been desperate to try and get rid of something and again an officer who, who's working on it might be able to work that out right this has been around for years and maybe talk to the the owners or potential ones and they say well they, they'd like to get rid of it. You can make them an offer they can't refuse, sort of thing. But and, oh, no, I'm I'm quite in, in favour of trying it. But um, I just warn you that it's not quite as straightforward. Yeah, I mean, as I said before, if we had this protocol, if we had this flow chart, then CPOs could be in it somewhere. And then you've got the, so that you know, I think that something like that needs to be in place. What do we do with these? You know, and, and at the end of the day, I mean, start. Taxing these people who are these properties that they're not using. They'd sort it out quicker then if it. I think that's another point actually, because I think, um, I, can't, I can't remember, it was in the, the council tax man, what did he, he mentioned there was a new yeah. thing that was coming in from the government and that it would be up to the council. I can't, did we write it down? It, that uh, where we could increase the tax on. Long term empty properties that were over two years or something like that. Um, yeah, through you, Chair. I, we already have that as a council tax policy. Um, so, over. It was more, it was more, the man that was the. Remember, Andrew it was Bamber. Yeah. It, it, was, it was above what was voted a few years ago. He All said right, it okay. would be controversial to bring it in. He said it would be controversial to bring it in, but um, it was something that was coming in over the next 12 months or something. Oh, okay. Right, I, I thought you were referring to the, the, the policy. Above and beyond what's yeah, already there, yeah. 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 Adele, did you want to come in? Um, I was just, 
Sorry, it was, it was breaking up a little bit there for me. I just want to echo what Nathan was saying in terms of the policy provision that already exists for charging additional council tax on empty properties. And also to, just to just sort of like give a bit of a, a note of caution about CPO powers and the difficulty of using them. You can't, you can't use CPO powers simply to go and acquire a property. Um, and ultimately, there's got to be um, a genuine reason f f for doing it just because it's empty. If it's in a good standard of repair and it's, it's not forming part of a, a large area clearance, then I think you would struggle to actually justify the use of CPO powers. So it's something that would, just a note of caution really, because ultimately, like Councillor Moore had said a short while ago, it will ultimately come down to a cost benefit analysis in terms of the costs of procuring some of these actions and the benefits of actually the the end goal and that's ultimately a, a decision that members will need to make in um in an arena of competing demands for other resources for other other things that are on the wish list as well in terms of corporate priorities so it's, it's, there's no there's no easy easy answers at all Hey, I think for me, I think it just empty properties. It's very complex, and I think we kind of just it may take some work after this task group's finalised. But I think we we just need to just figure out where it actually sits. That's, that's my view. Has anybody else got any more questions? No, I think. Um, yeah, I suppose it's just come back on that. I think I think that's that's sort of your core issue, isn't it? You you decide where the appropriate place is. Um, within the council to deal with it and then the strategy will flow out of that that team whoever's best placed to deal with it um, and like i said there's a lot of questions to to be answered once that that decision has been made i think to enhance this report um, if it is going to go before council at some stage uh, for a plan of action would be to get some costings in as to what it's going to cost the potential for legal fees could be quite high. But um, knocking properties down and creating building land might be um, a benefit as well as a cost. But I think there should be some cost benefit analysis if you can actually get hold of some, say, figures from areas outside this borough that have done it. Um, I'm sure there will be. And uh, I think that will enhance the situation enormously Does anybody else to comment? but i was going to say i don't think that's for us the costing things for us to do we we give these recommendations and then it's that's that's the decision because we we've i think that's going beyond what we that we remit yeah. i don't disagree june but I can imagine that would be one of the first questions. What's it going to cost us that would arise? That's the decision for the cabinet to take. No. I do agree with you now. We didn't, what I can recall when we did slight move, but I don't think we put any costings towards no. slight move, did no. we? No. So, no, I agree what Jean's saying. Okay, has anybody else got any more questions to ask uh, Councillor Howard and Councillor Maud? Okay, um, so I think we can move on to the next agenda item. So thank you very much for attending. You're more than welcome to stay or you can, uh, you can leave. <laughs> Okay, so moving on to the uh, next agenda item, uh, the final report discussion. Um, members would have had this circulated to them prior to the meeting. Um, I do apologise for it not being displayed on um, members. Yeah, not on um, we do have paper copies as well in the chamber, so feel Just free probably to, well, uh, to follow on. Okay, um, so... So just going through the report, um, I think we'll start on page seven and we'll just take it through um, category per category. Um, well, I was looking before that. 
But in the report, all the recommendations are uh, summarised. Yeah. And, and through the report, so we'll, we'll go through section by section. Yeah. Well, can I just can I just make a point? I think we're being a bit polite again. I, f I have the same things about the uh, the other task group. Consideration to be given. No, it's not consideration because we want people to look at this and come up with it. And see, consideration to give the placement. We need to say we need to look at the placement okay. and ascertain if it's in the right direction, which we don't think it is. Yeah. Yeah. We need to come rather than... I, I think considerations to... Well, I've considered it and I'm too. Yeah. You know, it's giving people that opportunity to say... Mm. <laughs> hey, it's too woolly. It's just too mm -hmm. polite. I'm sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Deirdre? Mike. Oh, there's one there. <laughs> so have I. I've, I've just sent you it as well. Oh, I've got more copies now than I know what to do with. <laughs> so moving on. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> we'll start with page seven. What are long-term empty properties and why are they an issue? Um, and this will... Uh, has anybody got any comments on that section? Mm -hmm. well, can, sorry, Chair, but, but can we look... The recommendations are, there, are up there on page four. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I think we need to look at them first. Yeah, okay. And get rid of the consideration bit. Okay. So we need to look at the placement of em, uh, empty properties and enforcement in the structure of the council and not assess if it... Well, I suppose we're there. If it remains most appropriately... Under licensing, but under the present director, I don't, you know, because we don't think it's in the right place at the moment, and we need to say that. I think. Yes. There's mm -hmm. yep. Matthew. I'm changing all his wording again. But he loves me. Mm -hmm. um, can I chair through? Yeah. Uh, can I ask Nathan? Where do you think it sits, with an officer's hat on? It's because I've got... Oh, it's because I've got mine on as well. There you go. Um, it's a tricky question, really. Um, and I suppose it depends on how you view what the priority is. And I think that's a, a question for this task group, really. Um, is... And I can't say how I've even touched on that, is, um, is the... <coughs> The sort of main effort is that um, bringing the total number of houses available in the, the borough up, um, and in which case it makes perfect sense that it's in housing, um, or is it about dealing with those ones who are a blight on communities and, you know, look a mess, um, in which case, well, I think there's a, there's a different consideration. I think no matter what you do with this, if the council decides to recruit to this post, um, it's always going to be a post which is going to have to work across multiple directorates because there's so many people who will have a hand in this no matter what. You know, council stacks are going to have to be there from a data point of view. Environmental health have, um, uh, you know, powers to, to clean up places. Planning have uh, powers to clean up fronts and section 215s and things. So there are lots of different people who, who have a hand in. Um, so I think that's the key question to answer first is what's the... What's the main effort? What, what's the, what are we trying to achieve with this post? Okay, I'm just going to bring Adele in first. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I think we go back to kind of like one of our very first um, meeting sessions where we were saying it's probably not even full-time role, if I'm honest. Um, so it's it would really be about expanding an existing role. And I think that because the nature of the role is very one of dialogue and encouragement and, you know, working with people, it's not really an enforcement situation. It's not really an enforcement matter. Um, yes, there will be enforcement actions that can be taken in terms of the 215. But a 215 is about a snapshot in time. It won't solve the problem in perpetuity. Thank you. 
I mean, you've gone on to the role, but I've, I've not got it under the directorate yet. I don't think it should say licensing number. Within the structure, and assess if it remains most appropriately under the correct the directorate. That, you know, the directorate. South Ribble, neighbouring council, shared services. It comes under housing. Would it make sense, seeing as we work together and we do that, they've got that in place? to follow a similar model. And then we go on to the job description after that, and we just nail yeah. this down. I'll just bring it bring Adele in again, because she's got her hand up then. Yeah, I, I, I think the, the key issue, I don't, I, it's not about its enforcement, it's about the, the, it's about the working with the, to, to bring them back into use. The, the, I, I anticipate that the, the vast majority of the work would be involved dialogue and working with people rather than enforcement and i think it would be i think given that with what we've talked about so far matthew i think it's words in that recommendation is to assess whether it could sit within the planning and um, and development directorate full stop or whether it should be moved to a different director then we need to set out clearly that this, this task group has got a fundamental concern about it sitting in planning and, 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 and commercial well, planning and development directorate and spell that out in the recommendation. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to repeat some of the stuff that Adele's just said, but I think, because I think we're at a funny stage in the council about our housing policies and stuff anyway, and I think we're going to have further discussions at, it's a shame Terry's not, not still here, but I think we're going to have further discussions at Labour Group and stuff about that. So I think mm -hmm. we kind of, I get what you're saying about yeah. But my understanding of the sort of political direction of South Ribble is that they're adopting a totally different policy around housing in terms of starting to build their own, and we're not quite <laughs> we're not quite at that. So I think, to me, I I don't know. It's a difficult one. I think we've just got to bottom the fact that it's in the wrong direction. I think if we start going down, we'll be here all night. If, if we start going down the route of, um, you know, is it about um getting as many people housed as possible or is it about tidying them up and making sure they're used again because I think that'll come as part of the wider discussions that we have as, as a group about um, housing policy and stuff I think to me this is just about uh, does it sit under planning or does it sit somewhere else and but I think if we get into the complicated you know into the specifics of we're preempting what we're going to be discussing over the summer aren't we um, can I just come in on um, recommendation number two? Um, I do think um, it's consideration is to be given, obviously. I'm, I'm not really keen on the word consideration, mm. obviously, because more notes just touched upon. I think we need to change is to be given to look at either redefining the job description of an existing enforcement officer to include empty properties or look to recruit an empty properties officer and evaluate the contract type suitability and review if it could be shared with South Ribble. Anybody else got any comments on recommendation number two? Anybody agree? Michelle? Mm. Yeah. Chair? Yeah. Sorry, I think he's breaking up. I don't know whether you, you've asked me to, to comment then. I, I, I heard something, but I don't know in my name. Are you comfortable for me to comment on condition on recommendation number two? Yeah, comment, yeah. I think that that should relate to an existing officer rather than an enforcement officer. Yeah. About redefining the job description yeah. for an existing officer, yeah. because it doesn't necessarily follow it be an enforcement officer. Ah, right. say um, the rather just take out that, those first first number of words co completely and just say um, the job description of an existing officer should be redefined or look to recruit rather than yeah, consideration yeah um, the, just the job description of an existing officer to include uh, the job description of an existing officer um, should be amended or redefined. Mm. Yeah. 
and just put, yeah, should be redefined to include empty properties or an empty property officer should be, you know, should be recruited. And then I suppose it would be under, okay, with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I don't try to evaluate it. Thank you. No, that's true. Okay. Um, recommendation number three um, regarding updating the empty homes policy. Do you enjoy that? I think we need to insert in there as soon as possible. Yeah. After, you know, to Charlie Council to update the empty house homes policy as soon yeah. as possible. Yeah. Because it's just yeah. lingering about. I was just going to. Oh. Is it on? Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, I was just going to say I agree with what you just said for three, but I think something needs added about neighbourhood meetings as well, because I know it's popped up at our neighbourhood meetings about we used to get annual reports on empty properties, and we haven't had last couple of years. I don't know whether you just either add it as a separate one or you just say once. Is it on there? Oh right. I missed that. Well, it, perhaps it needs to say Thank keep you. members informed because we're not at the moment. Because we it used to come up, at, as you say, at neighbourhood meetings and it doesn't. Do you think recommendation one should be amended in a similar vein to two? Because um, you still got still consideration. Yeah. Yeah. So. You could say, um, sorry, no, no, sorry, what does that no, mean? No, yeah, um, um, the, you could just say the, the placement of property should be reviewed uh, w within the structure of the council should be reviewed or something like that. Mm -hmm. You've got that should word in then rather yeah. than. Um, so the placement of rent property is within the, count, the structure of the council or within the, you know, something words to that effect should be reviewed. To assess, reviewed, to I assess. assess. Mm. I was going to bring it down. Which direction? Yes, yeah, Chair, thank you. I, I, I'm sorry to labour the point. I'm just mindful that it's not about the enforcement, enforcement. only of empty properties. So I, could, I, I think it just, it, like Nathan said, it's just about the placement of empty properties within the structure of the council because it's, it's you know, all the work associated with empty properties is more far reaching than, than enforcement. You know, it's, you know, in an ideal world, enforcement is a last resort, so there'll be a lot of work to be done that isn't necessarily enforcement. <laughs> it's just simply the placement of empty properties within the structure. I'm just going to bring Michelle in. Um, thanks, Adele. I get that, but ultimately, at the end of the day, we are, it could come down to that there will be some enforcement in the long term, and, I, and it doesn't sit comfortably with me taking that out. I think it still needs to be left in. Um, and ultimately, this is just our suggestions going forward to council. It's down to ONS and full council as to whether or not they accept this. But I think we should leave that in because ultimately, at some point down the line, there will be some kind of enforcement. Well, if, if we get the... One of the things is we've said about there needs to be kind of the flowchart thing, then enforcement comes into that somewhere to the, towards the end of the process. Surely. Chair, could I come in? Perhaps yeah. then you say, um, rather than the placement, perhaps you use the responsibility for empty properties, which encompasses everything that it means, so tracking the numbers and taking enforcement action, if it comes to that, just subject overarching. Of. Yeah, whatever, whatever comes under empty properties, you do everything. The subject mm -hmm. of empty properties yeah. rather than yeah. placement. I don't know if that satisfies you or, or not. <laughs> <laughs> We spell reviewed right. We do it. <laughs> it's the teacher in me, I can't help it. <laughs> yeah, that says it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's it. a long time, but that says it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm happy with that now. Yeah, yeah I'm happy with that. Yeah. Thanks, Mary. And I'm happy with the second one. Now. Okay, we're happy with the third recommendation, how it's worded. As soon as possible, yeah. 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 
Yeah, Alistair. I'm not interfering, but I'm just intrigued. <laughs> um, so number three, when you say update its empty homes policy, have you got a particular line that you want to follow in it terms needs of looking updated? At. It's not just, been updated. It's not been updated since <laughs> okay. when we look at it. <laughs> I mean, that was the first thing when you looked at the date on it, you think this policy must be need to be yeah. reviewed, updated, because yeah. okay. it was, it's, it's a long while. 2015. 2015, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's why. It's going to bring that in and I'll bring it that one. Um, yeah, it's just the, that wording of as soon as possible, because I think three is sort of subsidiary to the first two, um, and I think that's lost it almost in as soon as possible. You, you'd have to or in my mind, you would think about where you place the, the responsibility, you recruit an officer, and then you look at the reviewing the policy within that structure, because otherwise it's you might review your policy and then move it into a different team, and you sort of you want to review your policy again. No. No, no but to me it should flow into that, you say. Yeah. And if it's 2015 since we did it, I think it's pretty... Uh, you know, we do need to look at it. I think perhaps that's the first step. Mm. It's. Um, I think it has had. It did get an update. It might have been two thousand and nineteen, so it's had a refresh. But yeah, and I, I appreciate it's a, it's a small refresh. Okay. Um. I'm just going to bring her down. She's had her hand up. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm probably playing, paying semantics here, but I think that should be um, a recommendation that Charlie Council to review its empty properties without actually accepting there's an update required. The update will obviously follow, but I think it should be to review it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I get what you was, what Nathan was saying, but I think if it's if regarding the order of process, if you will, but I think. If you do it as per the order of the report, then I think it has a fresh set of eyes looking at it, because I think with respect, if it was done the other way around, then people would probably come to the same conclusions, then recruit somebody, and then say, there you go, go and do the same as what we've been doing for the last... There wouldn't be any new approach no, or anything, no. whereas if you recruit somebody, then you say, right, your first job is to Maybe. review, update the empty homes policy, then they might come at it with a fresh set of views or whatever you know yeah I, yeah I mean, I, I, i'm not precious about it i think the point i'm making is you can't update it until you reviewed it so the, the key thing for me is for it to be reviewed well can i can i suggest we put review and update mm. um, because it will need reviewing but it will also need updating because it is yeah it, it's years since it's been refreshed properly so it will need updating at some stage yeah, absolutely, totally, totally agree. But I think it's important that it's it's a wider exercise because it it needs a whole scale review. That's that's kind of like the point I'm trying to articulate, I suppose. Okay. So yeah, yeah, um, Councillor State, I completely agree that the only thing what I was saying is is that you need to do the recruiting first before or, or think about where the structure is, then recruit, and then get onto your your policies. Is the point? And I think we're saying the same thing basically. Is everybody happy with the wording of recommendation number three? Um, number four. Everybody happy with the wording of recommendation number four? Yeah. Any more comments? One could argue we always already do. <laughs> <laughs> I think, Are an issue in certain areas. I think <laughs> number four is okay. So is, yeah. that, is that not to define, do we not need to define close collaboration? Because I know like you say you do work, I think we raised this at the last minute, I know you say you do work closely together. I think I raised it about, you know, if something comes into the planning side of things and then it's not deemed to be enforcement worthy and, you know, should it, does it then get passed to environmental health or whoever? Do we not need to define what close collaboration is? I don't know, because I know you say it happens, but quite often as a council, you know, like quite often residents will say like, oh, well, it's been reported and it wasn't, you know, nothing could be done about planet from a planning enforcement end and that's it. And it's like, oh, well, have they looked at it from another angle? And then that's then the council has to get involved and between the two or three different departments and stuff, should we not define what 
close collaboration is in terms of how it should be improved. Because it's your point from before, isn't it? You know, that it'll always cross departments. What do we see as like the perfect solution for close collaboration? You know, like you said about your flow chart and stuff. Yes, we need you know, that. Whereas if it doesn't come under one department, that then you go to this and then you do. So the customer feels that it's been explored properly. Yeah, and yeah. I suppose that's um, that's what you need your officer to sort of follow through. It's just it. it I, I envisage that coming up with a flow chart like that would be very difficult because. Each each case is going to be completely different. Yeah, but you, you make it in a spider. It's a yes, no, and then if it's no, this is what happens, and if it's yes, this is what happens. Isn't it? Mm. So, so at least there's some structure to where it's going, if you will. What about, what about something like um, officers continue to work in close collaboration f through um, I don't know, like an empty properties task force. So the thing is, like you know, you recruit this officer. And then they have, I don't know, quarterly meetings with council tax housing, environmental health, all that kind of thing. So that there's like a regular thing where they're all coming together to bottom these issues rather than just saying, oh, yeah, I'm an empty property. I rang Nathan up last week and he said, you know, there's no... <laughs> mm. um, so there's a trail. <laughs> do, do you think that's something that possibly needs to be considered in the policy review? Um, how how that how we actually deal with that, you know, which would be a decision of the council, in any case. We're all going to be decisions. Of yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really chucking ideas into the mix. Um, can I just bring it down because I'm just anxious to get a hand up for a while. Yeah, I think Councillor Snape and Nathan have stole the fun my thunder between them. I think it's about you know to, to work in close collaboration through the creation of a multidisciplinary team to work to meet quarterly. To, 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 to discuss them kind of thing. It'll be a multidisciplinary team rather than a, a, a task force. And then I think that's an important point that, you know, that the, like you say, councillor Snape, that there is a regular um, kind of like a, a contributor from each of the stakeholders within the council to actually, you know, be able to steer the ship through, through the empty properties that, that we're currently looking at. Would you simply just say officers to continue to work in close collaboration, including through a multidisciplinary team, which includes quarterly meetings or um, to ensure long term properties, or to continue to tackle the long term extra properties or something like that? I don't think you need to specifically spell out the, uh, the different team. No pressure, we're all watching him type. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where mistakes happen, isn't it? I mean, yeah. could we not maybe define the teams under the relevant section in the report where that recommendation will fit in, maybe? Yeah. Instead of just having it listed as one of the recommendations, just to have that. The team yeah, so you can bulk it out in the body of the report. Yeah. In the body, yeah. Yeah. I think that might be. That's a better way to Yeah, it'd be more appropriate, I think, to do it like that. Quarterly. We'll put regular. Oh, quarterly is fine. Quarterly is fine. Regular quarterly meetings. Mm -hmm. Regular quarterly meetings. No, yeah, regular. It's in the line above that sort. Regular, correct. Got a little more talk, correct, Matthew. <laughs> Anybody else have any comments mm -hmm. on recommendation number four? Um, recommendation number five. Um, I do have one comment about it. Um, on page. If I could just um, ask members just to turn to page nine in the report. Um, it does list all the parishes. Um, what about the unparished areas? Yeah. So my, I, I'm, I'm a from, from my perspective as a town centre councillor, there's nothing in there that says anything about any properties in... Charlie North West Ward or Charlie South West Ward. Or, or even just Charlie Town Centre. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and I think I think we could do with yeah. amending the recommendation to maybe have a wider wider data. 
well, why don't we just put on the, do the town centre on the bottom of the, the chart that was there? We need to include the town centre wards in it. Mm. Definitely. Yeah, through you, Chair, the information itself came from the council tax team, and they were their information they have is parishes, and I have asked them whether they had more detailed, but they were hesitant to go deeper. I've yeah. been there thinking I've been daydreaming. Sorry, yeah. Um, <laughs> Whitley Woods isn't on there either. <laughs> Yeah, and we, we have at least one, because the one on my road, <laughs> fortunately, is not a problem yet. Although I dread to think what the back garden looks like. <laughs> it must be, yeah, yeah. the front garden yeah, get uh, starting to get overgrown. But other than, you know, the <laughs> house itself. Yeah, I'll just bring nothing in if that's OK, please. Um, yeah, I, th I think it's a, a technical point, really. Uh, from what I understand, so those numbers have been pulled directly through council tax systems, and it's organised by your parishes. Now, I don't know how that translates to um, sort of traditional pari you know, parish council areas or anything like that, um, but I, I understand that's, that's why that data has been pulled, because it isn't organised in wards within council tax systems. And I think when we've had the neighbourhood meetings in the past, I'm sure they've been broken down. In, not into the, I've not seen them in the new wards like since the boundary changes, but... I'm sure I saw them in the old wards. Like, I used to get Heath, Charnock, Rivington, Adlington, and Anston, and all that. I think that was manually done. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was an enormous piece of work that was done to do it that way. So it was going through and picking out, putting a postcode in, searching it for each, each individual one. So, um, there is something else that I've actually just picked up on. There is a couple of outside areas that haven't been included in this, and it's Asta Village and Bookshelves, not even... Yeah. included in this as well um so i think we need to have a wider collection of data really so we have got an exact michelle so how about then inputting the latest parish stroke unparished figures just putting that simple word in and then seeing if we can have the, the added wards underneath at the yeah. end like you've said the town center wards and the other ones doing in. Just a suggestion, Chair. Yeah. Has anybody else got any comments? You? Well, I would, it, Chair, I would imagine that your town centre wards will have quite a few empty properties. Yeah, I've got a few in there. Even if they're only... I'll because carry on. Because they're one meeting, please. I, I would have thought that the town centre wards, yeah, because they're empty uh, shop premises on, and that have been empty quite a while. So that could... Well, they might be, through you, Chair, they might be flats above some of those, if you see, yeah. things like that, yeah. that could be brought yeah. back in. Yeah, I do think we need to include more areas. Of, I think this doesn't provide an overall breakdown, in my view. No. True that. Well, we just need to add that we include all areas. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Parished and unparished. Yeah. Has anybody else got any comments? On recommendation number five? Nope. Okay, so recommendation number six. Um, Tell the council to ensure that the process of reporting suspects of long term properties is as streamlined and simple as possible for both residents and members. Anybody got any comments Can't on that? I disagree with that. <laughs> nope, that's okay. <laughs> Can we go? Residents, members, and officers. Because if it's streamlined and they know where they're going, so that I think you know where well, that could be included. Both residents of members and officers. Yeah. Okay. Um, recommendation number seven: uh, Charlie Council to remain vigilant and adaptive to the introduction of new legislation in relation to long-term rental properties. Everybody happy with that one? That. Yeah. Everybody happy with that one? Um. Recommendation number eight, Chorley Council, when appropriate, is to secure available funding and work with partners to promote and encourage the restoration of long-term properties back into use. Does anybody have any comments on that recommendation? Does everybody have a wording on it? No, I'm not. That's okay. Mm -hmm. um, number nine, Chorley Council, to consider the use of appropriate enforcement action when expedient to return an empty property to use. Can we get rid of the word consider? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, down I, I, I do remember back to my slight move yeah. task group days when Jim was using that one. Has anybody else got any 
uh, comments? Yeah. Yeah, use the considerate and please put Tory Council use the appropriate enforcement tax on when expedient to return effort. Yeah, yeah, I'm just a little bit more direct. Look on that. Um, has anybody else got any more comments on recommendation number nine? No. no. Okay, recommendation number ten, Chorley Council to consider the purchase of long-term rental properties on a case-by-case -case basis. I think consider again, take that out as well. Yeah. That's my view. We need to consider in that one. Do we need considering that? Yeah, because yeah. it's on a case to case basis. You've right. got to consider it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So you're in agreement with that one. <laughs> right, okay. Anybody got any comments? Yeah, Ken? Would that be better? Because I know going back a few years, like the, what, I think when they first took control of the council, they, they were quite keen on um, exploring the concept of CPOs, but it never took off because legal stopped it, legal weren't happy with it. I just wonder whether or not it might be better just to say Chorley Council, in conjunction with the relevant cabinet member, is to consider the purchase of long-term yeah. empty yeah. properties on a case-by-case yeah. -case basis. Because I know legal don't want to do it. I mean, they said it, didn't they, in that? No, but they should come up with a reason as to why they don't. Sorry. They should come up with a reason as to why they don't want to do it, whether it's cost, what it is, what it is. So yeah. we shouldn't just accept what they say. Oh, we can't do it, because that's the easy way, isn't it? So I don't know how we word that. <laughs> Done. Okay. Yep. Put a comma after Charlie Council. Comma in conjunction <laughs> with the appropriate. See, I'm doing my grammar. I'm going back to a grammar lesson now. Sorry, Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> Executive member, comma. <laughs> Sorry. You get there, Matthew. <laughs> I do it. See, yeah, see. Oh, he's, he's been taught his grammar well. <laughs> okay. Um, does anybody have any additional recommendations that they would like to add? Anything that feels appropriate? Kim? I just, I don't know if going back to Alistair Morwood's point before about the target and whether or not we need to, I've not got a suggestion for something to add, but whether or not we need to review... So is, Either the, is the target a, appropriate or something like that? Or, or maybe add an addition, because you were saying for the properties that are maybe like five years yeah. plus, or I think I do think we need some, because if you read the performance data of the council, it just looks like, well, there's no problem in Jolly. And obviously we're saying that there is an issue with the longer term ones, because they're not diminishing, are they? The corporate strategy in the principles. Should we put something in about discussing with legal? Yes. That's my next. Yeah, have I Nick? Yeah, yeah. Go on then, I'll let you. I've said a lot. <laughs> I think we should have a, a recommendation about working with legal on this because it's all well and good to doing all these, but then it gets to legal's point of view and they come along and say, no, we're not having it. We need to work with them to get an understanding as to why they don't want to do something, in particular the CPOs for one. And I know it's lengthy and protracted and, and costly, but I do think we need to have a recommendation in that we work specifically with our legal team. Because it keeps coming back to it's legal. Yeah. It keeps coming back to it, you know. Yeah, whether that's like, slightly unfair to legal, legal would never, it's not in legal's gift to say we're not doing that. Um, they may give advice that, you know, there are, there are things that need to be considered, but ultimately, if there's a case book before legal and it, it stands up and it, it, it's appropriately but, used, then but, that would have to happen. Yeah, yeah but we, we, we were, you know, like, Luke just, just came back and said, oh, no, we can't do that with it. But they've got to give you a read. They can't just say, no, we can't do it. Yeah, they usually do. They go wood. But it's usually money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah. it's just there, yeah. isn't it? It's a... I do think we need to have a look at that, and I think we should do a yeah. recommendation for that. 
and even it's to seek the views of legal department yeah. as to the viability of CPLs or yeah. something like that. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think the use of CPLs has been, but Adele's covered it more than anyone about oh, yeah. um, whether or not we, we can appropriately use a CPO as, as a method just to, because we don't like a, a property being empty, to use CPOs to, to, to purchase a property. And I don't, I don't think that's an appropriate use of that. I don't, because effectively when you CPO something, you, you launch a judicial review on whether or not you do it, the Secretary of State has to sign it off. So it's a big, it's, it is a big, big process. Um, and whether that, that would stand up, the, the, um, the principle of bringing a, what, a single property back into use, whether that would stand up through that process, I don't know. Adele? Yeah, I, I, I'm just mindful that, you know, the, the legislation that's set out about, you know, giving the empowering councils to take and um, to use CPO powers, it's generally about when public bodies are, are, are undertaking land assembly in order for um, a major social, environmental and economic change and delivering a redevelopment of a large area. Um, and the, the, the test for actually succeeding with a compulsory purchase order, the bar is very high. And the government sets out um, that there's got to be a compelling case in the public interest. And I'm not sure that that would meet the bar in bringing a single property back into use through CPO powers. I think that's what we are, are trying to tell us. I think that's their advice. Now, it may be that we seek, we seek you know, um, council opinion on this matter, and maybe the, um, the recommendation is for the council to seek council advice on the, the suitability of using MCPO powers to bring back to use single, single dwelling houses, and then you'll have the legal position and the legal advice whether it's something that needs to be incorporated into the policy or not. And I think it's, I think it's important that we get that advice because... My understanding is CPO powers is for its for, for land assembly purposes to provide you know whole scale redevelopment opportunities. I'm not sure you know using them for a single house, as I said, would meet the bar. But you know maybe getting council advice on that should be a recommendation. Okay. Any questions from council? Sorry, Chair, if that's yeah. a recommendation you would like, how would you like it worded within the report? I'll just add it. Um, pretty much what Adele's just said. Yeah. <laughs> you usually, you I'll, look, I'll, ca I'll catch up with you on that, Matthew. I, th I think the recommendation is that, you know, the Council will seek um, Council opinion regarding the suitability of the use of CPO mm. powers to acquire um, single... Um, Opinium. Most Purposes. Thanks, Adele. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But I do think Kim's right. We need a recommendation around the targets because I take Alistair's point. It is too woolly just to say that we've got just over 100. I think we need to, like Kim said, break it down that X number of properties for up until this point in time is not an issue but above it is an issue and it's a target that we need to address and bring down because you're right performance indicators if you look at them we're buzzing because there's not an issue but we know that there is hence the task group being set up and established to look at this we don't just set up task groups just because we can we set them up because we, we know there's an issue that needs addressing so i do think that we do need a recommendation around targets as to how to word it and it you know, should be meaningful yeah, relevant. You can't just give a number, you know. No. That would be part of your review, then, after you review the target. In terms of the appropriate strategy to review the target, then it's relevant, or whatever, I don't know. Should I just wonder, should we say something like, um, in line with the corporate strategy, um, that we ask for the target to be reviewed to reflect the to re, to, ref, to reflect the true the, the true the true picture the in true the borough. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Across the borough. Yeah. And then it includes everybody with that. Just gonna bring Adele in. She's got a hand up. 
Um, yes, yeah. yeah, thank you, Chair. I, would, I was just going to suggest that it actually forms part of the um, recommendation about reviewing the, the policy so that it's reviewed to include a refresh of um, smart targets in relation to um, empty leave it because that, that was all I was. That's a good number to stop at 12, don't we, yeah. to 13. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody else got any comments, no. queries? Um, I'm just going to just briefly just take everybody just through the report and just make sure they're all happy with it before uh, everybody goes. Um, so page five is just the, um, the membership of the task group and the, the scope of the review. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Alistair. Thank, <laughs> thank, thank you for attending. Um, so just page five. It's just the scope of the review, just what we set out to do at the beginning, the membership of the task group. Is everybody okay with the wording on that one? Yeah. Page six um, just continues from page five. Everybody happy with that? Yeah. Um, page seven, uh, what are long-term properties and where are they an issue? Yeah. Is everybody happy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, page eight... Um, empty properties in Chorley. Is everybody happy with that? And obviously, yeah. I think we'll, there'll be some rewords on the recommendations uh, that are in there that we've, uh, we've considered today. Yep. And then page nine, obviously, we just discuss, discussed about the um, collecting of a more wider range of data than what we, we have done. Adele? Put your hand up. Yep. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it's a legacy hand. I do apologise. Okay. Okay. Um, and then obviously, um, and then obviously, um, the, the the recommendations are going to be reworded yeah, as yeah. per our suggestions. Um, empty properties and other local authorities in Lancashire. So everyone happy with that section? Um, and then. I think the recommendations stay the same on that one, we've agreed. Um, page 11, um, just through the conclusion in particular, is everybody happy with the conclusion of that report? Do you think we had, need to add anything, amend it? Um, and then maybe, what can be done about long-term its properties? We need that, to that, fit 11 and 12. Yeah, that will include yeah. 11 and 12, yeah. I think, really. And then everything, that's just the appendix on the back. Kim? I think the only one I think it said that we identified that there wasn't a problem, but a, a few problems with I don't know. I think it just needs to change. It's like so the the concluding paragraph. It said uh, and a few long term, yeah. Yeah, I think that just needs beefing up a bit. Otherwise, it sounds like it's not <laughs> with long term empty properties. But it has a so you can't say it didn't have a problem and then say, yeah. but it did have a few. Yeah, so yeah. Just You've got to make your mind up. It has a problem, or it hasn't. Yeah. Even if it's only a small problem. Yeah. So you can't have both. Saying, uh, you don't have a, a long-term end properties problem, which is the overarching, you know, last, for example, Hyman has massive wards that they need to purchase to stay in place. But there are problems in this property. So there are yeah. some dotted around which are a problem. I think that's what I think it would be better to, to say. However you want it. I think it would be better to say it was concluded that Charlie did contain a few prob problem long-term empty properties, rather than saying we haven't got a problem with it, because oh, yes. come to Adlington, please, we have, you know, and go to Brinskill, mm -hmm. and they have, and there'll be other places. Yeah, I've got one in mind, and I'm waiting for yeah. well, I've got a few now, fast forward as well. You can't have mm -hmm. both, you can't. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah, okay. Is everybody happy? Yeah. Well, well questions? I've missed that one. <laughs> so, Chair, just, uh, just clarification on the wording of the uh, recommendation 12 in line with the corporate strategy. Ask for the target empty properties to reflect the true picture across the borough. We happy with that. Um, yeah. Where within the report do you think that's likely to that's be based? Is there an idea? Um, well, we could do we're trying to get it towards so everything's in order, just probably towards the end, maybe. Um, There's a suggestion that combine that recommendation with the policy one. Mm, was yeah, that a yeah, different? That yeah, yeah, so it would have to go into the first, the so first part of the report. Yeah. So it's not its own uh, recommendation, it's just a part of the. Yeah. Uh, was it this one? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it'll be in the. Uh, combined in it'll be. 
page eight of the report. Okay, is that, is everybody, any more questions, any more queries? Um, uh, yeah, I will conclude the meetings. Thank you everybody for attending. Thanks, Matthew, for I just, just before you all go, I just want to thank you all for, for taking part. It's been a real team effort and everybody's contributed to this. I want to thank Adele and Nathan and I just also just want to thank Matthew because he's been absolutely fantastic. So thank you very much. Thank everybody. you, everybody. And enjoy the rest of your birthday, Adele. Yeah. <laughs>